Hey, it's Friday, so it's that time again. It's Tech Addiction with JST Sense, and we're gonna get things started right away here with some computer news. AMD's new Trinity processor, the A10 5800 Plus, was released, and somebody's already benchmarked it to 7.3 gigahertz. Eh, it's kind of impressive, but Bulldozer already hit 8.33 gigahertz, and these guys did it by disabling two cores, so. It would be big news, but it's uh, I guess it's pretty good considering the fact that it's an APU and it's got a built-in graphics processor inside of it. So, But to the guys out there who got Trinity up to 7.3 gigahertz, good job. Now where's Neo? So TDK has set a brand new world record when it comes to hard drives. They managed to squeeze six terabytes, six TB, out of a three and a half inch drive. Imagine the amount of adult content you could keep on that drive and in high def. And if you're not 18 or 21 or whatever you have to be in your country or your residence, um, say no to drugs. So word through the grapevine, through the rumor mill, through all of that stuff when it comes to things that are not yet confirmed but are floating around everywhere, like every single Apple product that's ever been released since 2007. Asus, which is the number one motherboard manufacturer in the entire world, has reportedly, reportedly, made an offer to buy AS Rock, which is the number three manufacturer in the world. This is big news if it turns out to be confirmed because that means a big filtering effect when it comes to the supply chain for both of those particular motherboards. So it can be good news or it can be bad news. Asus may decide to stay with their own particular motherboard manufacturing process and supply chain, leaving the other guys who supply AS Rock out in the wind. But I don't think they'll do that because Asus is interested in AS Rock for the fact that they make a good solid budget motherboard, I don't think they would want to disrupt that. I think they just want to take on their processes, buy the factories, and bring in some cash. I like both motherboards. In fact, I've been thinking about going Intel, and if I do, I was actually looking at getting an AS Rock motherboard because they're a lot cheaper than Asus. I do trust Asus, but uh, they tend to be a little bit pricey, so this could be great for the consumer if it turns out to be true. This just in. Gamers want to see more boobies. Game Studio Team Ninja, who came out with the popular Dead or Alive series, has just released Dead or Alive 5, and they're taking a lot of flack regarding the anatomical proportions of some of the women in their game. And I don't know who would really be complaining. I mean, the game is already tailored towards men. The entire company is always tailored towards men. Can't really imagine too many men complaining about the size of uh, the TNA in those games, but somebody's complaining. And what's funny is when the studio was questioned about their practice of making these ginormously anatomically incorrect boobs, they said that that's what the gamers want. They get a lot of comments from gamers and feedback, and apparently gamers want to see more boobs. Let's go ahead and file that one under duh. Team Ninja Studios director Yohai Shambori recently told the game blog Gamma Sutra that, quote, we actually got a lot of feedback from people who were playing it and saying, we want bigger breasts. I'm assuming they mean <laughs> they want the people in the game to have bigger breasts because if you sit there and play games long enough, whether you're male or female, you're gonna end up with some huge tatas of your own. So they said, we want bigger breasts. Make the characters more like that. <laughs> he goes on to say, it was quite surprising. Really, Mr. Shambori? It was surprising to you that men wanna see bigger breasts? You don't get out much, do you? So this isn't exactly brand new news, but I finally got around to checking out the Crisis 3 trailer. I have to say it's absolutely amazing. I cannot wait to play this game. As a fan of the Crisis series, if that wasn't evident right here, Crisis 1 and Crisis 2, I mean, look, look how big that box is. I bought this game back when boxes actually were, you know, they didn't use DVD cases. Hell, I've been playing games since the boxes came in, you know, big five and a quarter inch floppy drives and you had 16 of them to load in a five megabyte game. But anyway, if you're not familiar with Crisis, it's probably one of the most cutting edge games there ever was, especially Crisis 1. Most computers couldn't play it because the programming on it was just really poor. But the Crytek engine, or the CryEngine, which they're now calling CryEngine 3, has been improved. It is less demanding. It gives you some of the best, best visuals I've ever seen of any game. As you can see right here, the graphics of it are just intense. They're amazing. The gameplay of it is pretty intense too. You wear this mechanical 
yet biomechanical suit of armor that basically attaches itself to your nerves and you control it. You can beef up your armor, you can run and jump fast or jump really high, you can go invisible, you have amazing reflexes, you have this really cool heads up display that shows you different routes you can go and the expected outcome of different routes you take when you come to a particular encounter with an enemy. It even shows you where ammo boxes are on the map and shows you unique points of interest that the developers think will enhance your gameplay. So you can choose to take the most direct firefight route. It can even tell you how to sneak around without even engaging an enemy. It's really cool. I suggest you take it out. It comes out February of 2013. We don't have an exact release date yet, but February is going to be an awesome month because it's Valentine's Day. And I'm in love with this game, so Crisis, will you be my Valentine? That's not, that's not gay, is it? That's not, no. So the 2012 Digital Content Expo in Tokyo, Japan, Toyota debuted something they think is revolutionary. What they've done is they've imprinted an augmented reality in the backseat of your car. They debuted this in a Prius, and what it is, it's in between the headrests of your front seat, there's a, a clear panel, kind of like a teleprompter and there's an image that gets displayed on that panel. So when you turn around and look at it, you can see right through the back seat of your car, even right through the people that are sitting in the back seat of your car. And what it does is it basically makes the back half of your car disappear. So you can parallel park or back up. I find this image right here a little bit racist and sexist. Shame on you, Toyota. How on earth could you apply that an Asian woman can't park or back up? There is absolutely no supporting evidence for that. I can't even, I can't even keep a straight face. I mean, look at this, look at this. <sighs> so Symantec, which is one of the leading companies when it comes to internet security and data solutions, has come out with a brand new ad where they take a server rack and they push it off the top floor of an 18 story building, smashing it to the ground in bits, basically showing that your server and your data and your applications in the cloud are still online in one of their backup emergency severe data solution centers or whatever they called it. I find taking an item and destroying it to be a very cheap and cliche way of trying to get more views. This week, Tim Cook came out with a public apology regarding the iOS 6 Maps app. You know, they got rid of Google. They cut all the Google apps from their phone, YouTube, the Maps. You gotta go and download a third-party map now if you actually want one that works. One that doesn't put museums in a river. Ones that don't think that a farm in Dublin is actually an airport. One that can actually tell you where the Apple Store is in Sydney in the right location. It's pretty bad when your own Maps app sends you to the wrong location for your Apple Store. One that if you live in England and you want to get to London, it doesn't take you there by way of Canada. So Tim Cook came out with this apology letter to all of the Apple users, apologizing for the apps not living up to its standards. And I know for a fact Tim Cook's over there just wishing that Steve were still around. He loves him. No homo. Romance. All that stuff. We miss you too, Steve. Because, you know, when you were around, at least shit typically worked. And if it didn't, at least you came out and said, well, you're doing it wrong. Don't hold it that way. Wear gloves, get a case, we'll even give you one. But the part that I found to be so comical regarding his letter is his solution to the problem while they're working on it is to go to the Google Maps website and bookmark it. Yes, so we're gonna get rid of, we're gonna get rid of Google Maps. We're gonna give you a shitty map system, one that guides you all over the world to get across the street. And then we're gonna tell you to go and download Google Maps. Apple has come up with the brilliant solution to incorporate the Apple Store into fixing the map problems. And they are requesting that every single retail Apple location dedicate 40 hours, they pick a couple of employees and dedicate 40 hours to examining your map system and pointing out any errors that you might see. Now, how can you talk about Apple without talking about the Samsung $1 billion loss to the patent infringement. Apparently Samsung has filed a juror misconduct claim against the judgment and is moving to have the judgment thrown out and a new trial. Why? Because the juror foreman, what's his name? He has some funky name here. Velvin Hogan being accused of juror misconduct and juror tainting and having an alternative agenda against Samsung. Now that's a pretty big claim from Samsung, but Turns out the facts are 
Back in 1993, Mr. Hogan was sued by Seagate. Yeah, Seagate, the hard drive, hard drive manufacturer, because this guy was in technology, he did something, he came up with something, and got sued by Seagate. And Seagate sued him for patent infringement. Okay, so what does Seagate have to do with Samsung? Well, it turns out, the lawyer who was heading up that lawsuit against Mr. Hogan in 1993 is married to one of the partners that currently represents Samsung in this Apple lawsuit. Oh, snap! It's about to get a little ugly up in that Samsung battle there. And because of this whole thing going on, I can't keep my iPhone or my Galaxy S3 in the same pocket. You should see the things I have to listen to all day long from those two. Hey. Oh, hi. What's up? Not much. I was just checking out the stuff. Do you really have to do... You're retarded. <laughs> You're fat. You're tiny. You are freakishly tall. You don't have 4G. I don't need 4G because my big brother has 4G. But no I one likes you because you break if you fall down. Quit it. I'm not touching you. Stop that. I'm not touching you. Stop it. I'm not touching you. Stop it. I'm not touching you. Cut it out. I'm not touching Dad. you. Dad! I'm not touching you. Okay, so just a couple of weird things I want to talk about before we get out of here today. There is a new thing out there called Like a Hug Vest. And what it is, you put it on and it's got some wireless communicator in there that connects to Facebook. And anytime somebody likes a status update, a photo, a video, a share, anything you put up there, if somebody clicks that like button, it deflates inward to simulate you got a hug. So I say we all find this model's Facebook right here and we all just mash the like button and see if we can't squeeze them to death like a ketchup package or a boa constrictor. All right, guys, now we're going to end this like we do every single week, and we're going to talk about technology's dumbass of the week. Now, I'm not going to display any names or any pictures on this one because I thought about it, and I don't want to get myself in any trouble when it comes to disclosing a person's information. But I'll tell you the premise of the story. So in Wisconsin, there's a man who broke into a house, and he stole a bunch of jewelry, a bunch of electronics, and he gets away, he runs away out of the house, and a couple of days later, knock, 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 it's the popo. Open up. We know you're in there. They arrest him and they have all of the information they need regarding who he is and knew exactly where he lived. Why? Because when he broke into this house, he went on the family computer to check his Facebook status. And when he left, he forgot to log out. So moral of the story is, don't be a dumbass. Seriously, because that was just stupid. All right, guys, so that's all for this week's October 5th edition of Tech Addiction. If there's something you want to talk about next week, put it down in the comments, link me to an article. I'll check it out. We'll talk about it, put up some funny images, see if we can't make a little bit of fun of it. And I hope you check me out next week. See ya.